This is part one of lecture note number one for ITSE 2321 Object Oriented Programming Using Java taught by Professor Richard Baldwin at Austin Community College in Austin, Texas. The title of the first lesson is Creating and Manipulating Turtles and Pictures in a World. In this lesson you, you will learn how to create and manipulate turtle objects and picture objects using Java object oriented programming in a world object. In this lesson I will explain a program that uses Java along with Barb Erickson's media library to add a picture and two turtles to a world. I will I will call methods on the turtle objects to manipulate their color and their pins. You can learn more about Barb Erickson's media library by going to my college website. On that website you will find links to the pages on Erickson's website where you can download the media library. So stated in somewhat more detail, the program that I will explain in this lecture will create a picture object from an image file and replace the default white picture in a world object with the new picture object. The program will place two turtle objects in a world object. The program will apply a series of operations to manipulate the two turtle objects so as to, pr so as to produce the output shown on the right hand side of your screen. The program will provide accessor methods to get references to the two turtle objects and the world object. The program will use those references to get information from the world and from the turtle objects. The program will display that information on a command line screen and the program will display a picture in a world object. The primary output from the program is the image that you are now seeing on the right hand side of your screen. In addition to the image that you see on the upper right on your screen, the program also produces the red text that you see on the bottom right portion of your screen. The black text that you see on the bottom right hand side of your screen is produced by the compiler program and the Java, Java virtual machine as the program starts running. Only the text shown in red is produced by the code written into the program. The first two lines of black output text on the bottom right on your screen resulted from executing the following two commands at the command prompt. The first command shown below is a command to start to start the Java compiler program running and to display its version. As you can see, when I created this output, I was running Java version 6 update number 14. The second command is a command to cause the Java virtual machine to start running and to display its version. 
once again as you can see at that point in time I was running Java version 6 update number 14. Throughout this series of lectures I will explain programs by breaking them down into fragments and explaining the fragment. The first fragment that I will explain is the driver class for this program that you see in listing one on the right hand side of your screen. A part of the source code on the right hand side of your screen has been chopped off in order to cause the text to be large enough to read. You needn't be concerned about that because the portions that are chopped off are simply comments. Once again, the code that you see on the right is the entire driver class for this program which is named Prob01. I will begin the discussion with the import directive which is shown highlighted at the top of the code on the right hand side of your screen. An import directive is a directive to the compiler and the virtual machine telling them where to find a compiled class file on the disk. This particular import directive provides information to the compiler and the virtual machine telling them where to find the class named color. This directive says that the color class can be found in the package whose name is java.awt. In the classroom I normally ask a few questions as I go along and I will pose those same questions in this series of online lectures. However since this is not a face-to-face -face communication I will give you a few seconds to ponder on the question and then I will show you the answer. So the first such question is what is an import directive? And the answer to that question is that an import directive is a directive to the compiler and the virtual machine providing factual information. The next question is, what is a package? And the answer is that a package is a specification of a particular folder on the disk relative to a standard root folder. You can think of a package as a disk path specification where the periods represent the backslash characters that you would normally find in a path on a Windows machine and represent the forward slash characters that you would normally find on a Linux machine. Thus the import directive on your right is a path specification showing that the class name color is located in a folder named AWT which is a folder contained in the folder named Java. The folder named Java then is a folder contained in a standard root folder that is established when the uh, Java software is first installed on the computer. Every Java application 
must include the definition of at least one class. That class must contain the definition of a method named main. The method named main must have a method signature with the syntax that I am going to highlight right now. It is possible to make a couple of minor variations to that syntax. However, they are insignificant modifications and my advice is to simply memorize the syntax that I have highlighted on the right hand side of your screen for the main method and it will always work. I want to make one other point and that is that there are several different kinds of programs that can be written with the Java programming language. In this course we will deal specifically with applications. Another common type of Java program is an applet. The point is that when you write an applet it is not necessary to provide a main method. In Java, the name of the class that contains the main method is also the name of the application. In this case, the name of the class is prob01 and therefore the name of the application is also prob01. In Java, the name of the source code file containing the class that contains the main method must match the name of the class. In this case, therefore, the source code file must be named prob01.java. Please note the dot java extension. Java source code files always have an extension of dot java.